It seems we meet again, my old foe. And tonight, it ends here. Huh? Rising Retriever Kip! Before I talk about how I deal with art blog, I want to introduce to you guys a good friend of mine, Katie Arrington. I've actually known Katie since middle school and actually we went to high school together. She used to work just for the industry, but now she dedicates most of her career as a coach for artists. One of the main things she specializes in is in procrastination and how to deal with procrastination. So if you have something like procrastination or an art block and you feel really unsure with your career and how to move forward with it, she's someone that I would advise looking up to. I've taken it myself. She's been such a good help. And also she organizes and curates a routine that's best for you. And this can all be done through Zoom calls. So if you'd like that extra help with someone who specializes in that, then go check out Katie. Otherwise, here's what I have to say. Hey guys, it's Nikki Matoa, and today I'd like to talk about art block and how I personally deal with art block. Now, for those who don't know what having an art block is, it's when you have something that's hindering you, that's preventing you from creating art, creating work, or being productive. There's a lot of factors that can contribute to having an art block, such as the lack of motivation, the self-doubt, the anxiety, the fear, or just being burned out generally. As I make this video, I'm personally going through an art block myself. And here's the thing about artists having art block. Having an art block is completely normal, but there are ways to work around art block to work with it and still be productive with it. So I'm going to talk about my top suggestions and practices that I like to do when I face art block. And remember, none of these are in any particular order. So number one is I like to write various things. I like to write plans and things I'd like to talk about for my YouTube videos. I write little log lines for silly ideas I have in mind that I'd like to tackle later on in the future as a project. And I try not to think about these ideas too hard. I just write whatever is going on in my head and just explore that. I try to worry less about organization since I'm just trying to lay everything out. And it's easier said than done to be honest. However, one writing thing that I've been practicing recently is to do more of thought downloading and journaling. An exercise that I would recommend you guys doing is think of a thought that's bugging you for the day and for 10 to 15 minutes, just write anything that comes to mind while thinking about that single thought. Write things about how you feel about thinking about that certain thought and how those thoughts lead to certain actions or habits that you do. I'll also write about how my body feels and eventually I'll write about what results can lead to having that thought. I'll think about counter thoughts or arguments. So if I have a negative thought, I'll try and think about things that may seem in a more positive light. Maybe my first thought would be, oh, I'm not good enough because I'm not getting enough likes on my social media. But in the end, I'll also think about social media isn't everything. I have to think about how I grow. I think about the support of my friends. I think about the good feedback I get from people. I also think about how I've grown as an artist. These thoughts make me feel more driven, more excited, and therefore it'll make me do better actions and lead to better habits. One of the reasons why we have these great anxieties is that we never really had the chance to actually process our thoughts, write it down, think about it, and really analyze it. We have to slow down and think about why we feel a certain way, how it's causing art block, and how the certain thought might lead to future problems later down the line. So what helps is to write it down so you can actually see those thoughts rather than manage and fight it all internally. I recommend you do something like this daily so each day is a single thought. Don't rush it, it's a slow and healing process. Number two is I like to do drawing studies. So whether it's figure drawing, observational sketches, film studies, whether I'm studying a certain art style, whether I'm studying anatomy, I just like to study drawing. That way I'm still being productive with my time when it does come to drawing, animation, or art. When I work on projects, whether I'm working for a studio or whether I'm doing personal projects, I never really get the time to actually study the things I need to. When I'm on my downtime and when there's little expectations, I can just use this time to do self-studies and actually improve on something that I've been lacking. The great thing about studying is that I find it relaxing and again, I don't really have high expectations for it. It's just something that's for me. I'm not trying to show it off to the world. That just makes me even more pressured. So when I do studies, I know it's personal. When it comes to animation, sometimes I like to study and copy from videos. And these are videos that I can just find from YouTube. Sometimes I'll load up a dance or an action and I'll just try and animate that using the video as a reference. Again, it's a study. I find it relaxing, but at the same time, I find it stimulating. Even if I post it online, I say it's a study from a certain reference, I still manage to be productive with my time. 
The third top practice that I can recommend is just to learn or study something else. If you've never used a certain software before and you'd like to learn it, well, why not use the time to learn that software during your downtime? So for me, I want to learn how to use Blender. I want to learn how to integrate 3D into my work. And I've been following YouTube tutorials for Blender. I use Blender Guru and videos from the Deuce. Sometimes I use this time to attend workshops. I'll attend online classes, whether it's anatomy, painting. I can learn from someone who specializes in that, expand my mind, expand my knowledge, learn how they approach things, and absorb that. That way, I'm still using my time wisely. This summer, I decided to teach animation for Concept Design Academy. I'm teaching it online. And the reason why I decided to teach is so that I can improve on my communication skills while at the same time, I want to learn from my students. A lot of people tend to think that you need to be the best artist or the best one in your discipline to be able to teach, but that's not true. You learn that there's communication skills, there's leading a class, there's leading a group, and when students share ideas, I learn from that too. There's a joy from learning from your students too. If you've never taught before, but it's an inkling in your mind, I recommend you guys to do it during your downtime too. And you know what? It doesn't have to do anything with art. It can be anything that's recreational to you. It could be cooking. It could be learning how to start a business. It could be learning a completely new skill, like playing an instrument. That way you're giving room to the discipline that is having the art block right now to just recover while you try out different things. A fourth one that I'd like to recommend, and if you just still want to be productive, you still want to make art, and you still want to release that art online or whatever, then I would just draw things of your comfort zone. Something that's comfortable to do, something that's easy to do, I guess, and something that doesn't require a lot of effort. So for me, I would just do random doodles and sketches of fan arts here and there. I like to do fan art because I find fan art relaxing. I can still put it out online. And while doing fan art, I still learn things from it. And if this is something that you enjoy doing, something that's easy for you, and again, doesn't require too much effort, and you just want to put something out, just do it. Don't worry too much about how people are going to react to it. Don't worry too much about the comments or the likes you'll get. Just do it for the sake of just putting something out, just drawing for fun. Try not to think anything that might cause that anxiety that can lead to art procrastination or art block. Another thing that I like to keep in the back of my head while doing these comfort zone drawings is that I try not to worry too much about finishing it, making it look polished. Even if it's sketchy and super loose and just super rough, I'll just leave it as that. The more I overwork on something, the less I have fun and the more it just builds up that stress and anxiety. So if you are OCD about having fully polished work, try and let loose. Be okay with just putting out unpolished work. That way it can slowly build up the confidence to be able to put up work regardless of how polished or unpolished it looks. It just eliminates that fear of expectations or that fear of only putting up worthy work. The fifth one I would sort of suggest would be to join a community or challenges where you're constantly making art and putting stuff art. And the reason why I sort of suggest this is because not everyone will react the same way. Depending on my mood, I'll be motivated to join this community and submit stuff for that community, join these challenges, but at the same time, I'll feel demotivated. I'll feel looking at really good work will stress me out. It'll make me think that I'm not leveling up like these guys. So I take this with a grain of salt. One thing I'd recommend is just having a small number of friends that you guys are really supportive with each other. You guys are really close and you guys keep each other motivated. And if any of you guys are having an art block, you guys can talk to each other and how you guys can bounce back out of it. So I would recommend just having a small group of friends rather than a community if you feel that you easily get stressed out from external influences. The last suggestion that I'd like to give when dealing with art block is just to let it happen. If you can't be productive, if you can't make anything out of it, just be okay with it and take a break from your craft. So for me, the reason why I have an art block is partially because I'm burned out. I really don't know what to do next. I just finished a big project, so I just really want to relax and just take things slow. So during this time, I would suggest looking at other things in your life that may be causing you stress. So for me, my apartment was a mess when I was working on this certain project. And now that I'm done with this project, after cleaning up my apartment, after reorganizing things after getting rid of things that don't spark joy in me, I personally felt like a small burden within me was slowly lifted. Maybe go out on a trip, maybe exercise, maybe go out with friends. I like to try and communicate with people that I haven't talked to in a long time and just try and reconnect with them. I've been just writing more than drawing. Actually, I'm taking a break from drawing completely for the week and just taking the time to just relax and do things that are fun for me. I've been trying to cook more for my nutrition. I actually bought plants for my apartment just to give it a sense of life, that something is alive in my stale apartment. And I've been trying to be more disciplined when it comes to exercising. 
maybe you'll realize that other aspects in your life outside of your work is causing you that art block or that art procrastination. So take the time to just deal with that first. And eventually there'll be something that'll motivate you to get started into drawing again. I think taking a week off from drawing is good and see how you feel when you get back a week later. And again, I would suggest the early practices that I talked about. Just do studies, just do fan arts, just do things that are fun to you. Have little expectations of trying to finish it or how it'll be received when it comes out to the public. But all in all, art blocks are seasonal. Everyone goes through it. It's just a matter of how you want to spend that time, how you want to be productive, or whether you just want to take a break and relax from your work because maybe it's the work that's causing you the anxiety and eventually just keeps you at an art block. If you feel that the art block is too unbearable or it's something that you just can't do by yourself or with just a small group of friends, I would suggest like I did in the beginning, look for someone who specializes in that to help you. A counselor, a therapist, a career coach, a life coach, someone that is specialized and has the capabilities of helping you and can make a specialized routine that works best for you. Because everyone is different. Everyone deals with things differently and you can't assume that one solution will work for everyone. Anyways, those are my top suggestions and practices when I deal with art block. If you guys have other ways of dealing with art block, feel free to share it down below. Anyways, thanks so much for hearing me out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.